Kanye West. Ten studio albums and Dom the Two. Three collab albums, soon to be five, hopefully. Claimed musician, businessman, and a chronic liar. You said the album was coming out on Saturday. It didn't come out. What happened? Um, I didn't finish it. Say it bluntly, Kanye doesn't have an exactly perfect track record, be it when it comes to album releases or not publicly praising a certain Austrian man. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially hip- <laughs> Anyway, let's backtrack to August 2023. Rumors started speculating that Kanye was working on an album and that music was quote unquote coming real soon. On the 23rd of October, Ty Dolla Sign I like to give my dig up. revealed that he was working with Kanye for a collab project. Now, personally, I had barely knew who Ty was. I heard his voice on some songs and Kanye had already collabed with him in the past on songs such as Janya Part 2, Real Friends, but I never really listened to him. I just knew his voice. So I was a little bit worried, a bit nervous, a bit anxious. Regardless, they were holding a listening party 11 days later on the 3rd of November to preview upcoming songs from their new album. But that listening party was eventually cancelled together. Nine days later, Ty revealed at a live show that the album was coming real soon. The 22nd of November, Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign finally released a new song called Vultures, featuring Bump J and Lil Durk, which is the lead single from their upcoming album. Now, I'm not going to be like a music reviewer here, but personally, I didn't find the song that great. What you listening to, son? I don't think you like it. Well, why not? I like this new generation of music. and we with the foolish bitch. I'm anti-Semitic. I just fucked a Jewish bitch. I just- What that person? on your tape has is a medical disorder. It simply just wasn't up to Kanye's standard. Expectations were pretty low already as Kanye was coming off his anti-Semitic comments in late 2022 and I was starting to become increasingly worried that my goat was going to drop his first ever bad album. Two weeks later, Ty reveals the tracklist for the album. Standout track, New Body, was featured which was scrapped during the Yandi era. Everybody, which was supposed to be the lead single, was also featured, but Backstreet Boys being the mid-artist they are, didn't want to clear the sample for unknown reasons. Reasons. Nicki Minaj, who had a verse on New Body, didn't clear a verse, so the two main tracks that everyone was excited for weren't looking like they were even going to be on the album. Eventually, the album name itself was revealed and was called Vultures instead of the previous eponymous name. And eventually, one of Kanye's representatives said that the album Vultures was going to drop on New Year's Eve 2023, but that didn't happen. On the 21st of December, it was pushed back all the way to the 12th of January. And then again, the date was then pushed back to the 19th of January and yet again to the 9th of February. And I genuinely started thinking that the album was never going to come out. On the 23rd of January, Kanye himself revealed that Vultures would be released as a trilogy, with Volume 1 dropping on the 9th of February, Volume 2 on the 8th of March, and Volume 3 on the 5th of April, while revealing the original and amazing covers for all three volumes. Talking, which featured Northwest, his daughter, dropped the day before Volume 1 was initially supposed to drop. Now, the song wasn't exactly revolutionary, it wasn't exceptional or anything. Feeling like a strong zero on this record. And it seemed like the album would actually drop on time. There was then another listening party that same day and one of the songs played was Carnival, which contained a sample of the uh, metal rock man Ozzy Osbourne. No, fuck off! The song Iron Man. However, the metal rock man didn't want to clear the sample as he wanted no involvement with Kanye despite the fact that he and his wife literally dressed up as him for Halloween like five months prior. <laughs> Kanye himself then said that the album was going to drop in the next 24 to 48 hours. On the 10th of February, the album finally released, only on Tidal and Apple Music. And since I didn't have a free trial for Apple Music, I had to make a Tidal account and get a free trial there, just to listen to the album. <laughs> After creating the account, I finally listened to the album, I just indulged in the listening experience. To say I was surprised is a massive understatement. Now as I said previously, the expectations were already extremely low. I truly thought he was washed. I feel like a fucking Twitter clone saying that. Now, obviously, the album was one of the worst Kanye has ever dropped, cohesively, lyrically, and in just about every aspect. Don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the album. It wasn't boring by any means. You had songs like Burn, which had vibes of late 2000s Kanye, Carnival, Beg Forgiveness, Back to Me, and King, which is extremely overhated, by the way. I feel like it's one of Kanye's best ever outros, period. And that's a hill I am willing to die on. I don't care. But for the most part, the album fell flat. The highs were high but the lows were pretty low. Good Don't Die, a very good song with 808s written all over it, was removed off streaming, at least when it finally came out on Spotify, because the Donna Summers estate not wanting the sample or something, 
I, I don't really care to be honest, Kanye is better. Multiple times the album was taken off streaming services, more specifically Apple Music, because one of the distributors that Kanye used said that Kanye violated the agreement or something like that. After all this chaos, Volume 2 turned out fine. Now, after uh, Volume 1 uh, dropped, everyone was expecting Volume 2 to drop on the 8th of March. Are you delusional? March 8 eventually rolled around. It was 11pm for me. I was patiently waiting for the album to drop and it just didn't. When asked about it, Kanye said he was in the lab to a fan page called Yay Fanatics. Remember that name, by the way. The next day, Kanye revealed the album cover, which was literally just the Vulture's 1 cover, but with Ty on it instead and holding a photo of his incarcerated brother. Another listening party happened, songs were played, and someone at said party said that the album was set to drop in 4 or so hours. Trackstar, who is an engineer for Kanye, teased the album by saying Stand By, which he also did for Volume 1, and it dropped a few hours later. So, we had a valuable source saying it was going to drop. Everyone, yet again, expected the drop in 4 or so hours. It didn't drop, and it wasn't going to drop anytime soon. Gotcha. Kanye started to conversate with that same fan page from earlier, Gay Fanatics, and stated that he was going to drop the album on his website exclusively, and not drop it on streaming services at all. More listening parties were held, and there was still no sign of the album anywhere. Later on, some songs are added to TikTok and Instagram music, and it was all turned out to be fake. We then finally got a sign that the album was actually coming when Kanye messaged a fucking Baby Keem meme page, saying that it was going to drop on the 3rd of May, nearly two months after the original date. But, and this was then also turned out to be fake as well, and Kanye himself, for all this time apparently guys, said that there's multiple people on the account, and that the album was in fact dropping on the 17th of March. It, it didn't drop on the 17th of March. DJ Farris said that two new singles were supposed to release on the 19th through a world premiere listening party, and apparently this was also fake, with DJ Farris, the one who was organizing it, saying, Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no Yay premiere tonight. Unfortunately, hackers got a hold to some things. We gotta put it on hold, but soon as Yay gives me the word, y'all be the first to know, and we'll drop the right way. Stay tuned. Admits all this, someone by the name of Yes Jules got fired by Yeezy and now she owes like $8 million in fines for violating NDAs or something like that. Didn't really care to read about it, I just thought it was funny. Kanye instigated an argument that really just shouldn't have happened at all. Carson Act got sent a pair of pants and they were a pair too big. He was streaming at the time and he made a few jokes about it. Yeah! And Kanye just went ballistic at him. Shut the fuck up, I will fucking laser you with alien fucking eyes and explode your fucking head. Kanye's Instagram rampage continued when he messaged Fort Ye. He quite literally makes fucking meme remixes of songs. I'm the new ninja bitch, I kill newbies on kick. There's other things that have happened that haven't exactly been monumental in this rollout. It's just been so painful for the fans who have been patiently and eagerly waiting for this album to drop. It still seems that the album's a long, long way away from the listening parties. It seems quite unfinished in some points, but I really do hope the album does come out eventually. You got songs on that album such as Take Off Your Dress, Slide, Gun To Your Head, River, and other songs that are pretty good, and personally I think rank quite high in Kanye's discography. If any positives would come out of this entire rollout, Carnival kind of ended up going number one, which is Kanye's first number one since 2011, when he featured on Katy Perry's E.T., and his first solo hit since Stronger, which he dropped all the way back in 2007. Now. I love Kanye, I love his music, but he as a person is a whole different story. He lashes out at fans who just simply want to help and give out ideas, and the constant delays that every single album of his has faced, apart from 808s, is quite hard to defend. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, just follow my Twitter, um, all that juicy stuff, pun intended, and I'll see you in the next video.